Uh, so what's the story about the Black Stars now? Uh, Black Stars have not been playing well in the last two games and people have been concerned, uh, but we have been looking at it as well. We have also been concerned. They, I, we think the issue turns about uh, who coaches the Black Stars. Is it a foreign coach or is it a local coach? That's, I, I, I guess that the issue is turning around that. Kusiapia in a foreign coach, in local coach, we always talk about foreign and local coaches. Today we have scientifically addressed a matter. Our verdict is not very palatable to Ghanaian viewers, but we're going to do that on the touch screen now. Uh, and then um, we, will see, we will see how it goes. So let's, um, what do we have here? Great. We have uh, Professor Ismond over there. All right. So... <laughs> As Lord Amwa will say, uh, please pay attention to the analysis. So we're going to make some analysis. That comes all the way from the colonial era. And just a few hours ago, we we're talking about the colonial era. We're going to do this analysis that comes from the colonial era to show why we may not be able to use an African coach to coach the Black Stars at this time. We call it an editorial, so we'll give you the editorial montage. After the montage, to the touch screen and the action begins. Welcome to our Good Evening Ghana editorial on the Black Stars. So since the bond of 1844, we had relationship with the, 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 the colonial people, the British colonial people, and they decided to run our country very similar to the way their country was run. At that time, the interaction of the two societies will show that perhaps the Europeans were more advanced in terms of their, their share level of travel exposure, and our people were not as advanced as the Europeans were. So uh, the interaction was uh, mutually beneficial to both parties. When the Europeans settled in and, and the proper colonialism by ordinance began, they, de they began to develop our institutions because at that time, the colonialists, uh, some of them had to live their lives here in the colony, in the Gold Coast. So they developed our institutions. They developed medical science. They, they developed medical science as part of colonialism, but importantly because they were staying here. And when they got sick, at that time, London was, was not six hours away. London was 10 hours away. In fact, London was two weeks away by boat from Takrady. So if they were sick, they needed to be treated here. They had medical schools there. So they sort of set up our people to be able to go through secondary school here, go to medical school, and learn medicine at that time, way back in the uh, uh, late 19th century. And then came legal practice. So the colonialists also uh, thought that they are here. They bring judges. So the judges were coming from London and staying here. So a judge is living here. And it's going to deal with the matters. And uh, sometimes they wanted the natives to be able to participate, to help they, the colonialists to understand it better. So they encouraged our young men and women and those who uh, studied and, and did well, they, they sit on the boats, go to England, go and study law, and come back to practice English law in Ghanaian jurisdiction, Gold Coast jurisdiction. That's what happened. So uh, please pay attention. I'm just saying something very important. So the medic, skills in medicine had been developed. Skills in law had been developed. They've developed skills in engineering and other things over the years. Now, these are scientific outcomes. Engineering is a scientific outcome. Medicine is a scientific outcome. Law is a scientific outcome. And it requires long years of study. It requires a certain perfection in academic proficiency to be able to achieve it. Okay. So, because we started that a long time ago, because we started practicing medicine and doing medicine a long time ago, and I have here uh, Professor Eastmond. Professor Eastmond is the first uh, uh, qualified Ghanaian doctor. Don't, don't, don't get distracted. I'm still talking about football. I am very, very much talking about football. But, but I'm showing you Professor Eastmond, the first ever qualified Ghanaian doctor uh, to emerge on the surface of, I think it was 1918, something like that, when we got our first doctor. Uh, let me move on. This is uh, Se Akukosa. Se Akukosa uh, was one of the earliest, foremost Ghanaian uh, lawyers, and he became our first chief justice. Now, Se Akukosa became a judge. Of the, uh, of, the, of the British jurisdiction even before independence. By 1957, Seaku Kosa was, read, was already a judge. If Seaku Kosa had continued that, we would have gone to the Privy Council. He was sitting in Sierra Leone and other places for the British Empire's judge. That Seaku Kosa became a lawyer sometime in 1920. Uh, let's see who is there. John Mensah Saba actually is the first Ghanaian lawyer. He became a lawyer in 1887. In 1887, John Mensah Saba had become a lawyer uh, for the... Um, the English bar. He was called to the English bar in 1887. That's how long. Uh, who else is on the chat? Uh, this is, of course, uh, the, the celebrated icon, J.B. Dankwa, who also became a lawyer in the 1920s, according to the order of the British tradition. He was called to the Ghana bar, the, the British, the English bar association. Okay. So now back to my point. Let's, let's, look at, let's look at it this way. Back to my point. So in Ghana, we've been practicing medicine that long, we've been practicing law that long. Okay. If today... We want a doctor, a highly qualified doctor. We'll find it in Ghana. We have many doctors in Ghana who can challenge their colleagues anywhere, America, Britain, anywhere. 
and we are confident that we do have them for the reason that we have been developing this skill since Professor Eastmond. The skill in law, we are confident that if you pick any Ghanaian lawyer who is a member of parliament or is a member of the cabinet, we believe that our lawyers can match any lawyer anywhere in the world. But why so? Because we are confident about the skill of our lawyers. Why so? Because repetitively we have seen our lawyers deliver. We have seen our lawyers in public life deliver. We have seen English lawyers talk on television and American lawyers talk. We have seen our lawyers talk. We think that any day we can pick up a lawyer who can match the international standards anywhere in the world. Okay, so that's, that's, keep that in mind. So for law and medicine, we've developed it. Football has changed, my friends. Football has moved, metamorphosed from the artistic to the scientific. Because, as, as we say in jest, the European noticed that he doesn't know how to play football because he doesn't have the skill, he doesn't have the talent, so he, he decided to convert the whole enterprise into skills development. So he developed his skill for it and then it became scientific. So football is now very scientific. Here in Ghana, we have not even yet understood that. And football's uh, scientific nature begins with the coaching. That's, that's, the, that's the first part. Football's scientific nature begins with the coaching and then it transcends to the game, okay? We have not been developing our football scientific side. For, we have not started developing that. We don't, we, told, we don't have coaches who have studied coaching up to a certain level. Without that, it will be difficult to find the requisite coach uh, qualifications within our fold, simply because we have not been developing it as long as they've been developing law and medicine and pharmacy and all of that. That's the truth. So if we're really looking for a coach today in the scientific football, now what, what do I mean by football has moved from artistic to the scientific. Artistic is the skill, that's a football skill. Artistic, what we used to know, you know, he knows how to play football in the ball, try, uh, turning around, passing the ball in a certain way, even totals. You remember totals? Even girls play totals. You put the ball on, um, you land it on, on your foot and then you hit it like that, bah, 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 you know, that thing. And then you can do totals, 100, you can do 200 and all of that. And sometimes if you're a boy and the girls do better than you, you get a knock from your mother or something like that. So, so that's the artistic of football. The football has now completely changed. It's scientific. A lot of hours has been spent by people in academic halls trying to design football as a scientific skill. For you to be able to understand the scientific nature of football, as the Brazilians did, you would have to go through that process. It takes a very long time. Let me show you an example of artistic football. This is the 1970 World Cup. It's a game between Italy and uh, France, I believe. Uh, and uh, no, Brazil and Italy, I think. And it was the grand final. This is artistic football. That's how football was in 1970. 1970 was the last time the, 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 the successful Brazilians won the World Cup before 2002. Brazil went through this process. They won the World Cup in 1970 for the third time. They didn't win the World Cup for a long time. They asked themselves, what is happening? They were told that your football is no longer artistic. It is now scientific. So the Brazilians had to get themselves into the mood of the scientific football before they could win the World Cup again. If Ghana wants to come back, we have to understand that football is now scientific. Have a look at artistic football, 1970. Okay, so yeah, so that's, that's, that's artistic football. That is, that is artistic football. That, that's then. You pick the ball, you can dribble three people and you are still at the same place. You have not progressed. It doesn't matter. Now you can do that. Okay, at the risk of uh, 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 having uh, uh, copyright problems, I'm going to show you scientific football. Today's football. Look at this. Look at this one. Quickly, it's coming up. Yeah, so that's it. That's England on the ball. This is a recent uh, tournament. That is, that is them, England. Quickly, they are going with the Germans. Somebody crosses over there. A ball comes in. There, bam, finish, go. End of story. You see, 50 seconds from the center circle, they score the goal. They are done, you know, <laughs> you know from the center's area. 50 seconds, less than 30 seconds, they finish, they score the goal. That's scientific football. Now, scientific football does not just come. We have to begin to learn it. We have to learn it. And that's why we put the question uh, about, about, about on, our, on our flyer that do we have less than enough players on the international leagues and that's why the Black Stars are not doing well? Because that seemed to be what changed the fortune of the Black Stars. As soon as we got enough scientific players playing for the big leagues, then when they came to play for the Black Stars, in 2005 and 2006, the Black Stars were great because we had more than enough spread. Now in Europe, we don't have that anymore. So my friends, this CK Akuno matter. Let's discuss it. Before we can get a local coach within our fold, 
who has that scientific application and qualification, I don't think that we're going to be able to, I don't think we're going to be able to do well, and we don't have that in Ghana. We, we can't get that in Ghana. This is a debate for people to, to comment on. I'm sure that the social media messages are already coming. But truly, if you want a scientific uh, coach who has understood football from mathematics, physics, chemistry, biology, politics, uh, anthropology, that's scientific. Look at Asin Venga. The guy is carrying a PhD in something, economics. And he's the coach of Arsenal. I was talking about the Brazilians. So the Brazilians found out that, look, they will not win the World Cup again until, until they, they, they change their way they play football. So since 1970, the great, greatest world champions did not see the World Cup until 2002. And we saw that the Brazilian game has changed. They have now made it scientific, the quick run and quick passing. And the same for the players. You see, these days football, even for you as a player to listen to the uh, coach and understand what he's saying, you must be scientific because what the coach is going to tell you is scientific. So they do things like the LCM, the least common multiple. And they do those things, and that's how they do their 4 4 2. So, Michael Essien is told that in the variable, in the equation, you, the player, are the variable, the ball is a constant. As a midfielder, make sure that constant is always in front of you. That's what they tell them. That's what they tell Michael Essien. That as a midfielder, you are the variable, the ball is a constant. Make sure that the constant is always in front of you. So, whilst he's playing, because he understands the equation, he remembers that where is the constant, the ball? I have to be behind the ball. He checks, where is the constant, the ball? The ball is gone, he's running. That's how Michael Essien became great. That's what they tell them. You must understand the LCM. You must understand it. And then they put the football in there. You must understand some physics mechanism. They'll teach you. And then they plant the football in there. You must understand defensive work. And then they show you defensive work by something around a magnet. And then they show you how to man mark using magnets. All of those things is scientific. Even the young boys must be scientific in their orientation before they can play and listen to the instructions that's coming from the coach. At this time today, Ghana, we don't have anyone in our fold who can qualify as the Black Stars coach with a scientific appreciation of the modern day of football. So let's think hard and see what we need to do. Because, we, yes, we may have talent, but without converting our football into a scientific approach, we are not going anywhere. You saw what happened in Nigeria, Samson Siasia. They took him out, trained him for a long time. When he came back, Nigeria won the AFCON. And he saw that Nigerian team. They won the AFCON easily. They won it. So really, we have been doing medicine for that long. We've been doing boxing, uh, uh, law for that long, pharmacy. So we have the skill. Let's understand that football is, has become like that. In fact, football is a bigger earner than all of these disciplines I've talked about. So football has really become like that. Because it's such a big earner, it has become particularly scientific. And so we need to start growing that skill. It will take us about 10 years to find a real Ghanaian coach who has been groomed as a scientific football thinker. Yes, I said that again. It's going to take us 10 years to find a Ghanaian coach who has been groomed to be a football scientific thinker who can lead the Black Stars as a coach. I'm telling you that. 10 years. So we have to start talking to Stephen Apia, Samiko for Michael Essien. This should take 10 years. And by the time he comes back, he is the Black Stars coach. And then, like Franz Beckenbauer, he can be Black Stars coach for 25 years. And like Franz Beckenbauer, he can win the World Cup for Germany as a player. And he won the World Cup for Germany as a coach. So we are looking for a Franz Beckenbauer. Without that, I don't know about Qatar 2022. For now, we may have to have a scientific approach. That's the end of the editorial. Here's the editorial montage again.